Greetings, Light Drive, Janine Palmer here, Spirit Silver Moon for Divine Heretic Books and Harmony Energy Healing. Um, so I'm just doing an introduction to the series, series one, the Divine Heretic series. Um, now we've got nine books in that one so far, and I did two videos introducing the first three, and then um, four, five, and six. So this will be seven, eight, and nine. And so um, I'm just like showing the book and reading a sample from what's inside of it, but they all have similar genres, which are for um, energy healing, for emotional and spiritual healing, uh, from a lot of training in those areas, and then um, kind of rising above dogma or moving beyond dogma, um, again, from a lot of study in uh, that area. Uh, and then there's romantic ones in there too, because a lot of people really like that, that expression of love through poetry. Uh, so anyway, this is book seven. So this is Divine Heretic Hidden Keys. And they're all about the same length. They're all around 400 pages, maybe a little bit under, maybe a little over. Okay, let's see here. I'm trying to see if one stands out. This one has a lot of um, little uh, pencil corrections in it, this particular one in my hand here. Sometimes one will just pop out, you know. Um, this one's more of a story poem. Maybe I'll read this one. It's called Saxon White Horse. And there's a lot of mystical poetry in here. So um, this one says, In the mists he would see her writing, a glimpse of a flash of white. Was it a ghost or a vision? Or was it a play of the light? A big white horse with a lady her long hair like a golden flame. Was it reality or imagination playing with him, testing his heart's refrain? The image of her called to his heart, but when he followed her, she would be gone, disappearing into the mists, the lady he'd seen of whom he was fond. The horse was elegant and mighty, a powerful, compassionate beast, the lady's guide and protector, magical and mysterious to say the least. Where did they go, he wondered, and when would they return? Why was there a tug at his heartstrings? So strongly did his soul now yearn. Then one day in the forest, on a clear day with no mist, he looked up to find them standing there, and with her fair gaze he was kissed. She glanced at him with a smile, like a familiar knowing grin. She nodded in acknowledgement, and then she was gone again. He frowned in a disconcerted way, dumbfounded once again. So he turned upon the forest path, and there she was with that grin. He said, Who are you, my lady? Are you real, or are you a dream? Why do you haunt my thoughts? Are you a ghost in my vision seen? She said, Nay, my lord, no ghost am I, but I am spirit of the woods so fair. I live in the mists in solitude with my steadfast destrier here. I speak to the animals always. I also speak to the trees. I don't speak often to humans because in confusion they continue to bleed. Some of them will come to me once in a while to heal when they decide to take their power back from the illusion of the world which steals. He said, will you speak with me sometime? Will you help me also to heal? Will you tell me what is truly love, if you are truly real? She said, yes, of course I shall speak with you because my soul does recognize yours. Come with me to my humble cottage where there is always a welcome door. She dismounted from her great white destrier, Saxon was his name, and he could see there were flowers she had woven into the braids of his mane. She led the Saxon white horse alongside her as they walked, and happy they each were for the company as they became reacquainted while they talked. Beings find each other when knowledge and love is meant to be shared, a beautiful thing when hearts are filled, when illusions fall away and love is bared.
So that's book number seven. Uh, okay, so book number eight of the series is called Divine Heretic Wordsmith. Sorry, those are backwards. Right, okay. Hmm. How about this one? This one's called Her Own Prayer. The lady stepped away from him, and she moved into the flame. Neither one of them now would ever be the same. Experiences in their hearts they carried, memories like chapters in a book, but there were things they could never get back, things which darkness took. The destruction from the wounds neither one could seem to heal, and through, um, yeah, and through the stubbornness of pride, their bliss it would finally steal. He knew not how he slayed her. Through the bottom of his bottle he could not see that to save herself from ruin she must muster the strength to be free. She moved through the flame of transformation to find a part of herself waiting there to discover that part of herself had listened to the whispers of her own prayer. Her prayer might be recognition of our own value and worth. We must walk, or sorry, our prayer might be recognition of our own value and our worth. We must walk away from that which has died and allow the ashes to nurture our rebirth. So anyway, um, that is an example of something from Divine Heritage George Smith, which would be volume number eight. And so volume number nine is called Divine Heretic Song of the Seraphim. Hmm. Gotta find one that's kinda stands out to me here real quick. You know there's favorites in that, but like I didn't take the time to go through and sort of pick something out. I'm just seeing what's telling me that it might want to be red. So I think I will do this one, which is called Sacred Ground. Through all these experiences I'm learning how to flow and bend, how to move forward through illusion when good things seem to end, when good friends are no longer good friends due to misunderstandings, mists, and with feelings of loss and remorse, some times we are kissed. But maybe it's only our perspectives which make things seem so bad, even when attempts at communication don't seem to work, and we seem to move from happy to sad. Perceptions or misperceptions are incomplete energies which direct our world. Little dramas are always unfolding as lessons and knowledge continue to unfurl. To a special former friend one day she really wanted to say, would it hurt your feelings if I said I couldn't trust you due to your ability to slay? But to say I couldn't trust you would also mean I couldn't trust myself because I was the one who let you in not knowing he would introduce me to hell. Certain experiences of hell on earth, however, we each create by assumptions and expectations and, and by unhealed words uh, as foul gates. Your repeated behavior has showed me or shown me what I cannot allow, even if it means being lonely on my path. And to this I must avow. The knife edge of duality how on one hand things seemed so grand, and then on the other, then the other side presented itself. And so alone, we must now stand. Only we can really decide what behaviors and treatments we will let in. How we will allow ourselves to be treated or mistreated will determine how our next chapter will begin. We must become aware of releasing certain energies which draw in what we create. We must identify and release certain programs which keep leading us through certain gates. We must disengage from thought forms which the ego likes to run. Feelings of superior, superiority or victimhood sabotaging, sabotaging us before we've begun. I miss certain friendship connections which served me for a time. 
until my friends made me a target and I had to leave the scene of the crime. It was only a learning experience to test me to determine what I would accept to see if I was strong enough to love myself enough to reject. Oh wow, this is a long time. Okay. Um, my compassion here was tested, a blessing but not a curse, making me aware of the need for strong boundaries, which was a part of my rebirth. I trust myself to recognize those who are supposed to be on my path, and I trust myself enough to kick them out when they pull a knife or a gaff. I don't need to allow the foulness of their old wounds to wound me now. Their unhealed wounds and thought forms, the dull rusted blade of their plow. I must become strong enough to step away from forms of resentment and hate, from jealousy and manipulation when they lead me, when, when they lead not to my gate. Life is just a testing ground and friends will come and go as teachers of love or challengers for illusions, for illusion to overthrow. So beautiful when they come with peace and compassion, when honor is an energy they wear, when we love ourselves enough to accept their nurturing and return it in balance because we care, when we discover that we that they would harm us due to the unhealed their unhealed wounds, um, that is the test for how we will respond and if we will choose to sip from that spoon. Sometimes it's balancing karma. We must experience things to learn. We must also learn to shed old skins and shells and when it's time to burn. Detachment is a path to peace and calm, I discovered it one day. And as I take my power back from illusions which would slay, feelings and emotions are not energies to be buried in us. We must have open hearts to heal, not closed in ice or rust. Changing our perspective can literally change our life. It can change negative to positive. It can transform the dark to light. Thankful I am for many friends, soulmates along my path, whether they were, whether they were a teaching or a healing force, or whether they pierced me with their gaff. Part of the journey is for me to learn to heal, to heal parts of myself as I go, to heal through the divinity I come from, to nurture my own sacred glow. The sacred glow, I'm sorry, the sacred ground I walk upon uh, is part of the sacred ground I am and how I treat others is a mirror or not. Um, helps or hinders our light claim. Okay, so that's enough. Or that's all I'll do from um, book nine. And so that's just a little introduction to those books of series number one. That's all rhyming poetic messages. And then I have a second series. And like I said, those books are around, uh, I think I said it in the last video, they're around 400 pages, a little less, a little more. So then I have a second, and they're seven by 10. They're a pretty big book, as you saw. And then I have a second series, which is um, smaller books. They're five by eight, and they're only around 200 pages, a little less, a little more. And that's mostly non-rhyming, very short, poetic messages or discussions about things, which um, also include uh, healing or romance or whatever. Um, and then I have also something I call genre-specific books, where I took work from the first six books and put it into specific genres, and those books are um, like about the size of a six by nine, but they're still around 400 pages. And so um, some of them are just for um, emotion, like energy healing, some of them are just for moving beyond dogma, and some of them are just the romantic stuff. So if someone maybe doesn't like all the genres, they might like just one particular genre more, then there's books available uh, for that. Um, so that's a little bit about series one, and I'm gonna do some uh, little videos like this too about the books in series two, just to introduce people to them in case they're interested. So thank you so much, peace.